Hello. We are down one Menbung and now one Balaka Strand. <laughs> But we are up one uh, actually a bellowing bison, not a Skjernsen or whatever you pronounce it. How do you pronounce it? Skjernsen. Skjernsen. Okay. Skjernsen. Isn't like the... Oh god, I don't even know what that's called. The weird O. It's like pronounced differently. Uh, Skjernsen. Skew. Skjernsen. Or something like that. But... To the plebs, it's Scorinson. <laughs> right. <laughs> the perfect time you're on the cape in. It's, it's, it's to the plebs, it's Scorinson. Right. Anyway, well, if, if we're alive, I gotta like actually talk about things. Caitlyn ban, Rengar ban. I guess, how much Rengar does Hansu play? I'm act I actually don't know. That's fair. We got uh, the Alistar. Alistar ban, of course, the guy's name is Alistar Moody. Might as well. I won't be denied. Uh, where is Caleb? Oh my god. He's. Oh. Hey, Elliot. Hello. I wanna, like, actually cast. <laughs> no response. <laughs> the, bard, <laughs> the bard hover from hell, of course. I get it in. But it's gonna be oh, it's gonna be the galley of top, maybe. Cause they did I think they had some shenanigans in Pikman, which we will get to later. But so, it is true. We do have oh god. <sighs> Excuse me, we do have the Scion coming in for Garfield Juice, which I've actually never seen him play it, and he's on my team. Oh my god, where's Caleb when you need him? Where? Okay, uh, they're, they're doing something ridiculous, because it's, yeah, I think that's at least for Elucida, Jarvan Top, and then Galio mid for Garfieri. Not whatever the hell this is. Die, Packer Diehard and that Walrus did each get their comfort pick, so that Walrus got, still has his Amumu, Sejuani was banned away, Amumu's yeah, still up, yeah. and then Packer Diehard got his Syndra, actually, which he has been, he did uh, week two when he put the, played double Syndra, he did quite well, and I've, I mean, it's his comfort, and a lot of time, if something is comfort and is still good, like it can wreck face in PMA LCS. Yeah, even though he went the um, what's it called the Runin's PD build rather than Shiv her Shiv uh, rapid fire. Still don't agree with it, but you know what. Okay. Can work? Yeah. Exactly. Caleb, where are you? Where is the wild blacky chan when you need him? I would have to watch a lot of things for that. So how about no? <laughs> Honestly, probably. Yeah.
Wait. Oh god, this this better not be the Rakan Jung. No, it's not. Okay, thank god. It's like, okay, if Hansu does this shit... <laughs> Oh yeah, do that. And I believe also we have some... Uh, I believe we have an announcer now in the form of Elliot Eruyan Russo, so... Yes, sir, we do. And to get us started off, we will start with Chase Squad. In the top lane, he beats his bludger when he sees Hermione. It's allergic to milk playing on Jarvan 4. <laughs> In the jungle, he claims to be Bjergsen's secret admirer. It's Lucida. In the mid lane, he owes Neil deGrasse Tyson money and an explanation. It's Guy Fieri and Galio. As the ADC, he makes a living flipping collectible miniature dolls. It's definitely not Sal on the fortune. In finishing out Chase Squad, as the support winner of the 2009 Ping for Distance contest, it is Alistar Moody on Recon. And coming up the rear, we do have Shevin Sage Greg in the top lane. His mom still hasn't visited a pediatrician. It is Garfield Juice on sign. In the jungle, he drinks more Mountain Dew than the Appalachian Hillbilly. It is Dat Walrus on a moo moo. In mid lane, it's a bird. It's a plane. Nope, it's just Packer Die Hard 12 on Syndra. <laughs> just Packer Die Hard 12. As ADC, he replies to an email about helping a Nigerian prince. It's Opie on Lucian. And finishing out Seven Shades of Grey, gets support, he just married a, a Russian mail-order bride. It is Gert on Brown. Hey, what did I just listen to? And I will see you all next week. It's alive! Oh, my. Do I even want to know what I just listened to? Seven Shades of Grid. I'm not even in yet. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> okay, well, with some actual analysis, Seven Shades did pick themselves up once again. A strong team fight comp, Scion, Amumu, just for not quite as ridiculous amounts of CC, but still triple tanks. Syndra and Lucian, not the strongest, like, damage, like, like, spitting out massive damage carries you can go for, but still really strong. And Lucian Brom is that potent bot lane. Meanwhile, you do have also quite a bit of damage in CC on the side of Chase Squad. Jarvan can go in for those Flag Drag Cataclysm engages. Galio can follow up. And actually, I really like the Jarvan Galio combo of just trapping him inside the Cataclysm. And then they kind of get forced to not get knocked up by the heroic entrance. And you have, of course, Recon MF is a ridiculous amount of. Not so much CC, but Rakan can lock them down long enough to get an incredible amount of bullet time damage off. So, and then Hansu just getting some early pressure. Down. I really don't know this game. Like I just said, halt. I just said a bunch of gibberish, and now I'm not going to offer a prediction. Uh, uh, now I'm, that I'm seeing the teams. Oh wait, go ahead. I think I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to give it to Chase Squad. Uh, now that I can see the teams, I actually, for real, want to give it to uh, Seven Shades of Greg. I think that uh, it really it really depends on what builds um, Chase Squad decide to go, but I really think that tanks tanks are just what you do right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, True. They're just it's just so good, and I think a Scion with a just a bramble vest in the early game will completely just once again destroy a, a Jarvan. Uh, not, probably not as heavy because Jarvan is more ability focused. Uh, 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 just a little bit more, but I, 
based on like what the Gallia does, how how offensive the uh, allergic to milk does decide to go with his build. Uh, well, it, it'll it'll depend, but I really really think that. Uh, uh, finish my thought. Uh, Seven Shades of Greg <laughs> uh, has the advantage, uh, at least on uh, Team Comp. Yeah, someone's, someone's getting a little bit of feedback, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. That, we do have the five man group up for Chase Squad. It's just why not, and whose fans is back? Oh, Sean's back. Hello. Hey, sorry. Can I? I'm at. 50 seconds in the game, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so Ben Bung's back. Sorry, guys. I thought I had to take care of something. Uh, it, it, no, I don't have to. You're good, fam. So, I thought we were going to have Invade for a second. Guess not. As someone take over, something's in my eye. <laughs> okay, uh, so looking at the team comps I heard y'all talking about, uh, I really like the amount of Wombo. If I was Patrick Starr, I would definitely be choosing the side of uh, Chase Squad. There's y'all hit on it a little bit earlier. I like the Elise pick for the early game pick potential. Uh, hopefully, we'll see out. Obviously, Dat Walrus back on the Amumu. Uh, Garfield Juice on the Scion is something that I feel like can be easily dealt with with the side of Chase Squad. A kiteable champion, um, but uh, typical jungle starts going out from each side. They're going to end up on the same side with and <coughs> only only uh, the red uh, only chase squad got any deep vision, so they know they have uh, at least starting on red because they warded the blue. Well, I do like the wombo from chase squad. I think that. With the Brom and the uh, Scatter the Weak and the uh, Amumu, and even the Scion to some extent, they have a. Uh, some Shades of Greg has a lot of disengage, so if, like, you know, if they try to do. Chase Squad tries to throw out their Wombo, and the Brom or the Amumu has their ults, they'll just, you know, pop them and allow their team time to recover. Okay, okay hit this level 2 power spike first, goes in for a good chunk of damage onto the Misfortune. She does have the triple pots and the long sword. She will be able to sustain up, but nice early trades for the Seven Shades bot lane. Yeah, I'll say this. Uh, Misfortune is a very underrated ADC right now currently with the lethality. She's ridiculous. Uh, as we get a gank top lane. Which is a landing the cocoon. Level 3 gank for Elise. What do we expect? Garfield Juice throwing down Decimating Smash. No knock up. Oh, he does. Flash oh, out. No. Is he going to get with the red button? Double flash in and oh. first blood for allergic to If only Hansu did not uh, try to come down immediately. Oh, awesome. Off, <laughs> off of that web. He could have jumped on the Scion after the flash and just popped him. But... Yeah, Garfield Juice obviously saying um, that shouldn't have happened. I didn't want to die. I burned my flash. Why am I dead? Uh, no, obviously joking. But um, it's going to be a fun pause. Back to, I think, yeah, if the Unbreakable is up for the Braum, they can counter it. If they get the CC or they're able to find the MF uh, with the Scatter of the Week, they can jump on. It's going to be a rough laning phase for her. She needs to land some of her Qs onto the Lucian to kind of poke him out of lane as we see his blinking health bar right now. Um, but the Rakan is going to be a huge part of this game. I'm looking at Alistar Moody to have a really, really strong... Um, really strong uh, game this game because it's going to be on him and the Jarvan for the initiation. With the help of Hansu on this Elise... Um, so, it just, I'm, I'm really, I think if, if they play it correctly, front to back, I still give it to Chase Squad. Uh, I don't know how tanky the sound will get, how he can deal with, uh, the amount of CC that's coming out. I usually tend to take the team that has more CC, and the more reliable CC, in my opinion, is on Chase Squad. As we're still waiting for this pause. Yeah, we had one team say they were ready. Was it blah, blah, blah. Seven Shades said they were ready, but J Squad did not. Do we know what the pause is for? 
Uh, uh, give me a second. We're at three. Oh, Eric. Um, Eric is has three hundred ping pretty consistently. Apparently. So, oh, we good. We are unhotting. And we're back in it. So first blood. Back. Chase squad as they have a four hundred gold lead early on. Um, is it just a? Is it just a uh, spectator uh, bug or does? <laughs> It, to me, it looks like Zion's flesh is now at like. Oh uh, uh, yeah, that's the spectator it's just bug. A bug? Okay. The, I think the, the summoner spells like their cooldowns keep ticking even in pause time. Even okay. Though, like in pause time. Yeah. Just making sure they didn't hack the game and. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. He hacked the game. That's what I'm gonna go with. Okay. Oh, we got the flash in on the Packer diehard, and the crew not gonna land, but does not matter. Almost oh, the picking up that kill. Packer burning both summoners, but still goes down. That's not gonna be good for him. Two early kinks from Elusida, both netting kills. Good early pressure from the Elise. Yeah, Hanzu trying to get a little bit tricky there with the prediction on the flash. Oh, on the bot lane, definitely that's how. It's the concussive blow stacked on. Is forced to flash, and Opie's gonna flash after him. One more auto is gonna take him down. He is gonna get in. He's gonna get it, but he's gonna go down the tower. Although Alistar Moody picking up that kill, but is he gonna pick up the second as we pan away? Oh no, Gertz, you stand behind me on the minion. He's gonna get away. Yeah, he missed his Q as well. Oh man. Sadly. And, miss, and just to mention, Miss Fortune did still have her heal. Yeah, really awkward. No choice there by uh, definitely not Sal. And, and the uh, and Alistair Moody had the exhaust up as well. Uh, I'm not sure why those summoner spells uh, did not get blown. Yeah, I think you could have got an easy two for one there. If both summoners are used. Yeah, use a heal on the misfortune and then exhaust. Yeah, I agree. Uh, <laughs> As a logic, we'll back in. We're gonna have we have a wet noodle fight going on. Garfield Juice is on the losing end of this trade though, but we'll have the grass proc back. Getting nice damage back though with the shout, I guess I'm gonna call it. He, he is going, he's opting for maxing the shout, which I think is the right, is the right uh, call here. I dig it. I'm gonna tend to disagree. While the shout will get more poke damage, if you don't land it and that's where all your damage is, and you have a, a Mumu coming to gank top lane, then you don't have your percent health uh, charge on your Q. Uh, I just think that's better for wave clear overall. Uh, Sure, if you can land the E, but that's just a personal choice for me. I'm not necessarily a Scion main. It just uh, definitely yeah. I would do. It. It's just in. <laughs> Sean claims to be a Scion main. I've got here. Is the all back in? This is a two v four actually for Opie and Guru. They're going to get taunted up. The Justice Punch going to actually miss, but three guys are going in. The winds are going to chunk her down, but it looks like will he get away? The wind is quite doing just enough to slow him down. Also, Mary going back in is going to barely hit him with the grand, grand entrance, I think it's called. Yeah, we'll call it grand entrance. And meanwhile, on the other side, Obi got away from Elusida. So even in the 2v4, just J-Squad don't get anything out of it. And they burned some summers, uh, but they have to use a bunch of theirs as well. Um, not no real call on to who to, whom to go for right there. I think maybe if you have either Rakan or Misfortune roam up with uh, Hansu as Syndra continues to take a little bit of poke mid. Yeah, well, as OP gets knocked up by Alistar Moody, but some return damage will force him to just dash, dash out, dash out. Yeah, I think he just wanted to have the wave hit the tower so the wave would reset so they can get a good back timing in. Yeah. And uh, that walrus has been that MIA jungler right now. Uh, <laughs> haven't really seen much of him as much as we did last game. Although, um, even with Hansu still on an early game jungler, we didn't see much from him last game either. But a lot more um, proactivity from the side of Chase Squad that you would have liked to have seen out of them last game, even when now they probably have a evenly 
I will have to probably say scaling comp when it comes to a 5v5. Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's pretty even at this time now. I love that Scion skin, by the way. It's probably one of the, it's the best Scion skin that he could possibly do. Oh, the Mecha Zero Scion, yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, the right choice and the Galio skin choice. <laughs> Bjergsen only plays that Galio. All the other people like do the enchanted blue one, which I think is like lame. Oh, it's and better. I honestly Rom think all the uh, Galio skins are trash. <laughs> yeah, that Walrus a bit by himself. <laughs> Get chomped on by a boost up, but he's just tanky enough he'll be out of there. Yeah, that Walver is definitely not the guy you want to have being cut out right now. He's, you know, while he's a Moomoo, you're gonna think, oh, he's tanky. Well, he hasn't went back to buy any combat stats. Both junglers opting to go for blue smite this game. As Moomoo did get spotted out there. Yeah, that both junglers are around the bot lane while we have. The wet noodle fight in the top lane. Garfield used to go for the chain vest first this time. While allergic to milk picking up the Tiamat. Does chain vest build into Bramble Fest? No. Oh. I don't believe it does. Uh, Caleb? Do what? Does chain vest build into Bramble Fest? Nope. Okay. Uh, he's not going for it this game, it looks like. Okay. Uh, I will say with uh, Galio looking like he. He's leaving lane. If I was a Syndra, as soon as I saw Galio start heading bot, I would shove. I would shove, like, harder than some fun here. Oh, <laughs> the, it's gonna go back in, but both times being stopped mostly, actually, by the Unbreakable. Nice shield from him, and Guy Fear gonna flash forward for Taunt onto Gert. Are they gonna take him down? Barely are going to, and the Curse of Sad Mummy does not prevent that much damage from OP. Guy Fury using the heroic entrance to knock OP back up, and there's plenty of damage returned back onto him. But just a one-for-one -one support trade, but Logic to Milk is getting engaged on, and Elusa is here for the backup onto Garfield Juice. Decimating Smash actually gonna get dodged by Elusa, though, with the repel, and Garfield Juice is gonna go down eventually to Allergic to Milk, but chasing after him gets the kill in zombie form. Yeah, and uh, if you saw that, uh, Garfield Juice was TPing bot, but he got stopped by the Jarvan. Uh, the Jarvan oh, yeah, knocked, true. The Jarvan knocked him up, so... Um. Overall, I believe it's an even trade across the map, or is, a, is it a uh, two for one? Oh, nice! Uh, two there. for two. for two. Yeah, Cocoon onto Packer. Gonna get actually stuck back by Scout of the Week, but nice repel to dodge the damage. From the... what's... oh god. Unleashed power, that's what's called. That walrus does not get executed to red buff. Hey, no uh, broken shards here. The, I will just point out, we talked about it a little earlier, but it's even more obvious now. Uh, Elucida is getting so much more pressure uh, on this uh, Elise than the uh, Amumu. And on top of that, he is uh, almost doubled the uh, Amumu in farm. Yeah, something we want to kind of talk about in that last team fight that didn't really happen is that while Miss Fortune was six, Alistar Moody was not, so he couldn't uh, kill him with the quickness uh, right there, right there, which could have probably changed the entirety of that team fight right there. Uh, probably could have charmed Braum out of his uh, Unbreakable to do more damage, but once uh, once Miss Fortune completes this lethality item. I'm looking for another play bot lane with Guy Fieri roaming, or maybe even a four-man bot. We just, just reset a little bit. We've, we've of course gone back to even in gold because it's PMA LCS and why not? Farm, actually, like farm lead is the uh, top lanes. Top lanes even. Mid and bot slightly in favor of 7SG, but the jungle of Elusa is just so far ahead of that Walrus. He's up 500, yeah, 500 gold at 12 minutes. That's, yeah, and then 300 gold. Was, yeah, both. all quickness goes and gets the double knock up, and there's the full time going to get stopped up by the Unbreakable, but it does not matter. Cocoon means Gert is going down. Definitely not Sal picking up that kill, and there's the chilling smite onto OB. And, but that Walrus is here for backup. Gonna. 
actually, I hope he is still gonna go down. That walrus is now by himself in a 1v4. Gonna also go down 3 for 0. Definitely not selfing up his third kill of the game, and that's gonna be Dragon for Chase Squad. I mean, it, what, what was happening, we had the in, instant initiation bot lane into the bullet time with Elise roaming down while Walrus is just doing blue buff and then decides to roam on down, realizes, oh, I'm just in a Mumu and the damage dealers and all the peel is gone. Better roam from Guy Fieri because he's able to have the push on the Galio. He doesn't even have to burn his ultimate and TP still on cooldown. He's going in on the packer and the flash cocoon from Oista that does land and the damage is going to come in and there we go. Guy Fieri picking up another kill for himself. Another great gank from Oista. And we talked about this last game. Elus uh, Guy Fieri picking the Sanja last game, forcing the cleanse out of Packer for Die Hard. Packer Die Hard opting not to go for cleanse against a Galio Elise combo. I feel it's highly disrespectful uh, just because the amount of CC that those two can put out. Cleanse would have saved him there uh, uh, for sure. Looking for something here onto Lucian, possibly. Oh. <laughs> yeah, man, Gert is going to be the one to eat the cocoon this time. The teleport coming in on the backside. I don't know who that is. Gert going to go down. Yep, that, that is Guy Fieri who will go on a mission to hunt after OP. I don't think he's going to find it. Yeah, but then they can t transfer this into first tower with the ADC here at, and the jungler starting Rift Herald up with Scion. Uh, r still, really good plays, proactive plays. Hansu obviously feeling probably just the most comfortable he possibly can right now on this Elise. 10 to 3 in kills with a over 3.5 gold, thousand gold lead for uh, Chase Squad. Yeah, he's just hard carrying this early game. Like, Participating in 8 out of the 10 kills so far, I don't remember which ones he wasn't a part of, but he's he's being, he's doing all these things, he's just moving all over the map, getting these nice ganks off as that Rawrus goes in for a gank of his own, but has no mana, so... Yeah, he is not taking the Rift Herald, which you don't really need to have the uh, tears for taking that, but um, we're gonna have to hope that for 17 to correct they do something with this oh, oh the flash on forward go land onto both packer and gert and there is the quickness not gonna knock up gert though and all that burned and packer and gert sitting on half health more than half health they both get away yeah hold on we lose oh we lost caleb again wonderful Oh, that's, uh, they just go back in Cataclysm, and there's a Wombo Packer going to go down. Gert has to be next. There we go. Guy Fieri picking up second kill. Just easy Wombo, easy engage, or just no finding the right flag drag Cataclysm. And now he's going to TP back top lane. They're going to fend off the Rift Herald push, get this mid lane tower. Opie is pushing bot lane tower, but this is way more worth it for a squad. As Scarfield Juice has been sticking around, does get cocooned, and they are going to go in. No Cataclysm this time, but repels in. Scarfield Juice just going to flash out as we welcome back Blacky Chan. Is it? Oh my god. I really love my internet. I have not uh, had, you know, several urges to throw my modem against the wall. That would be ridiculous. Oh my god. Looking for a dive up in the top lane while Scarfield Juice has no flash. And no mana either. He is going out this way, but there's three other guys here. Knock up coming in, and now the cocoon, and that is a very, very dead Garfield Juice. Alusa picking himself up. Yet another kill. Not yet another, just his second. I think he finally deserves one. All the pressure he's been getting. Uh, what what time are you guys at? 17 1, 0 2. Okay, awesome. Uh, Glacial Fisher coming back in, and the winner's bite actually not going to hit. All the skill shots missing. I'm at 177. Uh, yeah, I'm at 17, 20, 21, 21, 22, 23. Cool. Thanks. So, I, I, I just want to talk a little here, um, unless. As. I predict the milk. I can out. Yeah. What, what can. What, what do you think uh, 700 Greg needs to do in order to get back into this? So, for my point of view, they, they're doing what they need to do, they're, they're rotating around the map fairly easily trying to trade what they can when you're losing team 
trading is definitely an okay thing. Uh, but this syndrome needs to be the one to just really focus out this misfortune or even just get the um, the least down. There's so much power and gold in both of those champions right now. Uh, but it's kind of running into the same problem. Oh, but, but the charge coming in from Garfield Deuce is going to get a lot of damage on. Definitely not tell bullet times the wrong way. And that's going to be the shutdown onto him. And now Chase Squad just has a run out. This is currently a 3v3. I fear he's gonna get all this, eat all this easy, going back in with the Justice Punch, but it's gonna eat the Winner's Bite, and he's going to get stunned by the Concussive Blows. Nope, no. Just the one kill, but a nice pick for Seven Chains. That's maybe and, not, and here, not much gonna happen off that, actually. This transitions nicely into what I think that Seven Shades of Greg needs to do. They need, like uh, Sean said, they need to trade. They need to uh, not really look for anything right now. Like, they now need to just walk into their unwanted jungle. <laughs> but they, they really need to just wait. They, they just need to play the waiting game, because I think if they can survive the Wombo from uh, Chase Squad, that they have a good chance of turning team fights. Um, yeah, I think if they find some picks, like, they... They, you, they have a ton of CC themselves, use their CC, catch someone out, and then just avoid fights after that until their cooldowns are back up, and I think they can pull back through that. Yeah, so going back to that last fight bot, yeah, definitely not Sal did have a misplaced bullet time, but he also had flash and heal up. I feel like you can flash and heal with the Galio ultimate on you, and then reposition yourself to get a really nicely timed bullet time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no pun trying to happen right there, or a well-placed one. Uh, and again, it says bot lane from Chase Squad. I know it's a sub and everything, so I'm not going to be too hard. Synergies. I will, because he's a hard. traitor. That's fine. You can be that guy. As, <laughs> as oh. Packer. Oh, solo kill. He gets destroyed. The offensive ish build. Tank Hydra just doing work for Allergic to Milk, and now Gert is in the middle of the team and the whole best. time. The bullet time has not come out yet. The heroic engine's not up too, and there's the bullet time gonna wreck that walrus. There's, there we go. Those are two picks, and J Squad looking on this tower. Flash forward from Allergic to Milk going onto OB, and Gert sitting in the middle. He's gonna go down to loose. The second kill of the fight for him. Garfield Juice is going to be up next. Not quite tanky enough. Who's gonna get his loose up again? Double kill for him. Three kills in this fight. Another tower, and. They're on low health, but they may look at Baron. Yeah, I think Baron's a little bit too risky right now, especially with the death timer on Dat Walrus. Maybe they want to try to do it, but uh, Tiger Diehard did get bopped initially in that fight. Still has ultimate up and both summoners. This is a risky call. This is not something I would really do if I was Chase Squad right now, but they're been burning through this with the lethality and the tanks that they have. Yeah, and Seven Shades doesn't really know. They don't have wards on it. Baron's going down soon. They are. Too late to this a risky call, but pays off many kills and a Baron for Chase Squad. They're just snowballing this game. Yeah, 9,000 gold up at 21 minutes is a pretty massive gold lead. Uh, and only the two outer towers remain, which is exactly where you, I feel like you want to be when you're uh, combat snowballing with the Baron buff. Almost as closely as, as early as you can get it. Uh, and again, right there, a well-placed bullet time. And then you just have a great dive comp. You have, you have the Galio who can reset tower aggro, you have the Elise who can reset tower aggro, you have the Rakan who can jump in and out resetting tower aggro, and a Jarvan who can just go in and with so much tank items on him and the uh, Galio just to just tank all the damage right there, and there's not enough gold on the side of Seven Shades of Grey to do anything just yet. Oh, <laughs> also... Garfield Juice getting caught out in his own jungle is just tanky enough that he can survive some of these fights now, but he is... He just doesn't quite have the items to tank a full team fight while Allergic to Milk has Randuin's anti-Tanic Hydra. Lusa waiting will not pounce on Gert, knows the guy's too tanky. But in the meantime, the Taunt coming in on the OP, and he just... He's going to actually take a good chunk of damage. He's eventually. Yeah, there he we is go. tanky, and yeah, there we go. And now he's down to half health. He's just got a heroic entrance out, and he's a okay. 
Yeah, I think Throw the it. ultimate was used by Garfield Juice right there. Whoa, the oh, tank is coming out of set. Oh. That's, the, that's, that's a one, not a tank tank, but a support tank, and that's still a ton of damage. Lloyd's milk pushing down this bot lane. Seven, not Seven Shades, Chase Squad, sorry, all, just all over, and they're putting so much pressure onto Seven Shades. Yeah. I think this is definitely the right call. One, they do the Baron call that I felt like they should have done last game, even though this one was a lot riskier than the previous one. But they just go oh, on their whole The team. nice wagon drag uh, interrupts the decimating smash and Garfield Juice is tanking quite a bit. Oh my god, Olus oh, just does so much damage. Garfield Juice gets dunked and now this is 4v5. This is not a good fight. Bullet time comes out, does a good chunk of damage to that walrus and he is low and is now going to go down. Olusa is unstoppable. 7 0 and 8 for the Olise. Backer Diehard is in a bad situation. Olusa like, there's the shutdown, but uh, Kill does get answered. Definitely not. Sal picks up that one. They're gonna push down this tower. Logic to milk in the mid lane. Nathan's gonna hop over now. They want Gert now. <laughs> or not. They're just gonna back away. Get the tower. Going for the inhib now. It's street. It's a 3v2 right now. OP does go in. It's gonna proc the concussive blows, but does get knocked up by Flag and Drag. He's returning so much damage though, but Gert gets exploded by Guy Fieri. They're gonna get the inhib. They get four for two overall, and they're gonna get out. Yeah, Chase Squad just really playing this snowball really well. I mean, this is a, it's a totally different team than what we saw last game. This is how they should have played last game with the other comp. And even with the comp that probably doesn't have the better early game, minus the early game jungler, they're up to a, over 11k oh gold God. right now. And Dopey doesn't even get the blue buff steal. Thanks for the leash, mate. Alistair Moody, gonna uh, just dash away from a bandage. No friends for a Moo Moo today. I, I do want to talk about one thing. Guy Fieri has not died yet, and he just picked up his Gargoyle Stone Plate. He built a oh. Righteous Glory, uh, which I think even furthers the amount of chase potential that Chase Squad can have. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> uh, but, you realized. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, it's, it's so important for them because especially as a Galio, you're just as punch if you miss it or if you run into something. And also just to kind of get that, the way the new one works where you can't control uh, the active by re reapplying it one more time, but the slow field is just that much once you hit somebody. Looks like there's a TP play coming in. Oh, you have the TP flying from allergic to milk around the backside. He's He's on his stuck. own and not quite tanking up, but there's the heroic and just gets a three minute knock up off the end. Here comes the Wombo. Gert gonna flash forward the pocket, but he gets chunked so low, and the Halastar Moody is actually gonna be the one to take him down. That Walrus off to the side, and the top flash comes forward from Guy Fieri, and there goes Garfield Juice. Eventually, he does have the shield to sustain, but no, he's gonna go down. Opie's by himself, flashes forward to where Sal does pick up the shutdown onto him, and now he's on allergic milk. But. Let's get milk does get taken Alosa and Guy Fieri just inside the base on their own, but so far a two for one. So this is the point where you're kind of <laughs> questioning, all right, what are we doing here, guys? <laughs> <laughs> it looked really awesome and it was a great setup, but not everybody was on the same page. Great bullet time. Sindra tries to burst down. Uh, definitely not Sal. A great redemption coming out of Alistar Moody. Right there, and uh, that's all. Playing with fire is gonna go down. There we go. Packer getting that kill. Alistair Moody gets out of there. Guy Fieri should be tanky enough to survive all this. And yeah, they're gonna give up chase onto him, but they chase squad just give up another kill for free, even after they get the tower. Yeah, I don't necessarily know if it was a and then hip. Sorry, I don't know if it necessarily was a uh, AFK moment or a little bit of BM. Like, I'm just gonna stand at your in hip. This is mine. I'm driving the fourth. Uh, yeah, but still some pretty big p power spikes coming out now. Misfortune with the rapid fire cannon, be able to get huh. a little bit more of those. Interesting pickup. Uh, probably would yeah. have rather just seen a little bit more raw damage coming out since her main purpose right now is just being an ult bot. Yeah, I mean, I like. I, I mean, lethality right on MF right now is ridiculous, but. 
like last patch when it wasn't i actually still preferred the crit build but this is more of a hybrid build i'm actually not a big fan of it with how lethality is right now i think you just go all in on as op off to the side but is going to get the calling interrupted by a charm and here's the bullet time going to go in not going to pick up sal Kurt not even going to give him double kill for who is definitely not sal nine and three on the misfortune as we lose i assume that's caleb again yep it's caleb Ripping yeah, we're this is, it's so different seeing Guy Fieri on a champion that, again, while he had a global last game and a teleport, having an ultimate global just seems so much more in his wheelhouse. Obviously, a former top laner playing a, top, a champion that he could have played in top lane as well. Uh, as they get this Baron here at 28 minutes, most likely to just press top or maybe get this bot in him again and then, um, you know, just close out this game. Because uh, if you wait any longer, I think if this gets to 35 minutes, it's going to be uh, not insurmountable, but we're getting to the point where uh, gold doesn't mean as much anymore. But oh, well, this much of a gold lead yet, yeah, it does, I'd say. Look, well, it does still do plenty of damage with the yeah. crit. We're just, if we get seven minutes more, uh, 13,000 is still a huge gold lead, but it, depending on the item power spikes, you'll have the void staff from the... Um, Cinder probably at that point and you know the tanks are gonna have more time to just tank up everything and provide more CC and more peel uh, as Gert for some reason is prioritizing a frozen heart uh, at this moment I would have rather have seen the Aegis come out from him uh, just from all the burst damage uh, that's there uh, or you know not necessarily a redemption from him but that could be a way to help reset fights for a team that is down almost four, 13 and a half thousand gold right now. Um, I mean, that's another dragon for J squad. Those second ocean, three dragons for them. They'd have the bot lane in hip has respawned for some shades, but mid and hip down, J squad looking at, probably gonna look at top lane soon. Yeah. J squad just have to not screw this up and they will they should be able to take the game soon. Yeah, definitely so. Again, this isn't a regular LCS even, but even though some teams, <clears throat> Liquid Envy, will have <laughs> leads like this and throw them, Fox. Uh, that, the lower teams, basically. Yeah. So it's just the way of closing this out. You might think you want the top laner in the top lane here, because his TP will be coming back up. I think you want to keep him with the four-man group and have Galio go top because he, not only does he have TP but more so he has the instant ultimate that the range would be there if they wanted to press mid or bot. Well, what I will say is the last thing Hansu needs to be doing right now is farming. I think taking taking the buffs is fine but his team is in the enemy base. He needs to get over there. Yeah, I don't know I what he's doing. Gafir <laughs> is on his own but he is quite tanky. That walrus is missing the bandage toss on him, and he's... Oh my god, they just can't do anything to him. Carries are not here. Yeah, but... two levels up on both of those guys too as well, so he's n not going to be taking much damage. Yeah, and now they can just pressure the spot to in hit for days, but... <laughs> oh my god, they're just going to go in and destroy OP. Wombo coming in, perfectly done, and Guy Fieri is now going in. Onto Gert, but the curse is that moment that some of the damage is coming back for seven shades, but it's not quite enough. Gert's going down. Next up should be Garfield Juice, and there we go. Oh, he is Provide. not gonna get out. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it doesn't matter, Packers. Now, Packers hey, gonna go down. Lucida, the goes down, goes down the tower, <laughs> but it does not matter. After the chaotic fight that was not that clean. Chase squad should be able to tie this up. Definitely have to actually get to go down, but Guy Fier it's okay. Guy Fieri is just whacking away at the Nexus. Eventually, one of these days, there we go. Gatekeeper Kalio with the win. Be the one one tie for Chase squad and Shades of Greg. Well, Chase squad doing what they needed to do last game. Uh, getting out to an early lead, even with a harder comp, some so to say. Uh, with not having as much early game champions, but then eventually just amassed a massive amount of gold lead, and there was nothing for a Seven Shades of Greg to do.
Looks so. like someone in chat thought we should call it Seven Shades of Drunk. That's an inside joke if you know what's going on. I thought it was funny. <laughs> I, I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say that uh, I think a lot of this game has to do uh, – I'm going to transition this right into uh, MVP, but I, I really want to give it to uh, – I want to give it to two people, actually. I want to give it to Hansu and uh, Guy Fiari uh, because of their early game pressure and really just in like all their ganks and pressure they put by and then all of Hansu's like multiple ganks just walking down the map and getting a gank in each lane just really enabled the whole team to just snowball into a blizzard. Yep, a blizzard. Indeed, it was definitely a snowstorm. <laughs> For those guys, I do. I, I think it's even more impressive with Hansu not doing Moby Boots at least and still being able to go around the map and not being answered by Dat Walrus at all, who was down at the end of the game by over 3,000 gold by his jungle counterpart and down two levels. So, I mean, there was just you, you choose these champions with you know who you have to hit a certain point. Uh, in the game for the jungle and they just get outclassed in the early game to where they're down these levels, they're down smites. You can't challenge objectives like you can before. You don't have the gold because it's all in the other carries of the team and they'll just bop you. Um, and I, I also do want to give it to both as well. Guy Fieri not dying that game. His Galio was a huge thing with the combined effort of Hansu on the Elise. Um, if there was a way for us to do a poll with both of them, I would. Oh but if I can't, if I have to choose one, I have to give it to Hansu. I am a jungler bias. I do think what Guy Fieri did in this game is just crazy with not dying. The Righteous Glory is an unselfish type of build for him. Obviously, you want to build tank, but to help his team get more picks on this Galio while um, having a 190 mm -hmm. uh, farm, he probably got an A+. Plus. Yeah. So. I'm really, I'm really glad to see him uh, commit to a build this time. I, I was, I was questioning all the uh, mixed survivability with uh, uh, damage on his uh, Lissandra, but I, I, I do think that going just full tank and fully enabling his team with the uh, righteous glory was the correct call. Um, yeah. I'll be right back, you guys. Okay. Yeah. Go vote for, go vote for MVP. I will give it to Elusa. I th like, I agree with you guys. It, I'm split between Elusa and Guy Fieri, but I, Elusa was just insane early game, pulling off so many great ganks. Like, Eric had some great roams. Like, don't get me wrong, but I think Hansu had just a few more, and I, I, he, he just came back and was just played out of his mind. So yeah, go go vote for MVP. Post it, Eric. Post it again. Don't vote for the traitor. That is definitely not Sal. <laughs> so, I think when when Sean gets back, we can hop up. Are we gonna wait to? Uh find out who won game two or are we just gonna go up there and um well let's let's call for votes because i'm gonna i'm gonna call it in like 30 seconds it's sunday And Eastern as well, too. Yeah, it's, it's 10 p.m. Eastern time. I'm casting that, I believe, along with Opie, actually. So, yeah. Opie and Rich, that combination of casters is OP. Caleb, I'm done with you. <laughs>
<laughs> the delayed reaction. <laughs> so I I called I called MVP. Always the slash Hansu did edge out. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Boo, Caleb. <laughs> I'm not a ghost. Get out of here. You're the worst caster, Caleb. I agree. I don't know what you're talking about. I do. Okay, so twice until tell Hansu to get down here, and then we'll hop up. Oh. Is he not? Oh my. Uh, oh wait. Hold on. Okay. Caleb's got it. Okay, ha no, Hantu is on. He's just put, he's right. away. So yeah. I told him. He knows. So let's jump up. Hello. Oh, hello there. Oh, God, Sean, 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 Sean. Caleb, the fact that you said OP. Yeah, man. that's like, Jeez, worse than, man. that is worse than something that I would say. This is true. <laughs> wow. Caleb, Caleb, sorry. I've become so numb of these jokes, dude. Come on. Bro, you but, don't I mean, if, if you think about it. References, it's getting old. Get over it. If you think about it, though, like, in the end, it doesn't even matter. <sighs> I'm just over here crawling in my skin. Okay. Huh. I don't even know Caleb, if that's the right sounds list. like you need to be, uh, you need to be up on breaking the habit. Tonight. Fuck you guys, I'm leaving. <laughs> Where's the exit button? <laughs> just, just make sure it's when it's minutes to midnight. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. All right. Uh, You've got to be kidding me. Stop. 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 This just, is no. unacceptable. Unacceptable! Oh my gosh, I wanted to play a quality game of League of Legends and I mean, have a quality chat with you guys and you guys were, do this to me. There were two quality games of League of Legends. Yeah, you're right, you're right. High quality, 1080. <laughs> the quality of the game was uh, very rich. Oh god. Caleb, can you, can you do me a favor and never Some of the picks cast. were OP. Caleb, please <laughs> never cast in your life ever again. Jeez, man. <laughs> It I think fun. I'm, I'm, it hurts so. <laughs> good. I think Hansu could probably need some pizza, Caleb. Oh, hey Hansu, you want a pizza? Oh yeah, please. A pizza <sighs> hey. All Oh my I god! I don't even know what's what anymore. So do we actually have questions for these guys? <laughs> or are we just nice. gonna No, no, I think I think death? I think that was it. I think that was the whole interview. <laughs> God. <laughs> Damn it. Sadly you might be right. <sighs> we, we gotta have something. Alright, I have a question for casters. Uh sure. Mm -hmm. How are you guys doing, man? Good. Or how, how, people I, of I, I, unknown gender. <laughs> I do have a question for the casters. What? Why have uh, player of the game votes and interviews if you guys don't have any questions prepared? Oh, sh I have a question. I have a question. Hold on. Uh, Gert, this is a real that's, question. That's actually. actually like related to the games that yeah. we were player of the yeah. games for. So, actually, I just have one of the game in general. Uh, first game versus second game. What do you think went wrong? Like, what went wrong in the first game and what went wrong? What 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 uh, what, what what changed? So we thought you had complete I, okay. control. So yeah, go ahead. In in my opinion, personally, what I would probably say was that the amount of pressure that was exerted. Um, first game, we had a lot more mobility uh, as far as champion picks are concerned. Um, it allowed us to kind of get a lot of those early game. Um, pushes and objectives that we needed. Whereas in the second game, um, Hansu had unbelievable godly pressure. Uh, I, those early ganks with Elise especially, um, I think kind of shoved things in their favor uh, a lot earlier. 
Um, oh, you're too kind. I, I gotta give credit when credit is due. But, okay. uh, yeah. I have a question from Sivan. <laughs> Was the J4 pick intentional for Elucida? And I have no idea what he means. Well, did, did the uh, J4... Oh, pick. was it like, was it a pick you guys like really wanted to do, or was it just kind of a response? You know, to be honest, I feel bad for my team for saying this, but I zoned out half the champions alike. I almost fell asleep. <laughs> so, uh, next thing I knew, we had Jarvan in the lead, so I'm like, okay. I guess I'll play at least. Okay, uh, guys, we, uh, Sean is kind of locked out of this channel, so let's move up one. Alright, cool. All right. Oob. Hey, here we go. Hey, it's my cousin. Ooh. Hey, buddy. What's up, buddy? We're Korean cousins, guys. Chill out. Yeah, chill. Wait. Koreans don't have cousins. What are yes, you? Yes, we have, we have, we have cousins, but we don't fuck our cousins like people in the United States. No, you don't. Hey, that's only Kentucky. Just, I was gonna say that's just West Virginia. So apparently, there's more than one state. Okay. Perfect. Right, any, any, anyways, anyways, I'm the caster, but you guys are really using it here, guys. Uh, so, my question, uh, also, real quick, I just checked the poll, why isn't Guy Fieri in here as well? Is it tied? I, ca I called it when it was 5-4, it became uh, tied. Uh, man, Rich, you gave us like a full hour before you declared the... Game the one, game one, game one. Always, game one, we always wait like a while. Yeah, Unless well, you have the time. That that one also, we had a longer, yeah. harder discussion about who was it because and yeah. this, this goes to my point about my question I wanted to ask uh, one for Hanzu seeing the team comp that they picked knowing that you had to play an early game to snowball because they had the better scaling and team fight comp what were the communications like with y'all and how why weren't y'all able to get the early pressure especially when you're on Kane uh, and then the second question for you and then I'll get uh, over to um Gert for the first game uh, as, well. as well. You chose the Darken, which I agree is the stronger of the two forms, but you still tried to play it like the Assassin when you were trying to make picks on to the Caitlyn and stuff and trying to burst them out, which was a little bit weird to me. What, what was your uh, thought process for that and my first question about the early game? It's a lot of questions. <laughs> it's two. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. I forgot the question, first question, but I can, I can answer the second one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm pretty tired. Um, yeah. Um, second question. I, I don't know. I just have a habit playing as an assassin, and I don't know Kane's kit very well yet, and I, I don't really play Darken a lot. I know he does a lot of HP, max HP damage, and does really well against the team fight and stuff, but... Yeah. I guess just not you being used to how he's supposed to be played for each form is what's really getting me. Mm -hmm. So I just have to get used to that. And the first question, if you could summarize the first question. Uh, just basically, you knew you had an early game comp that had to snowball or you get outscaled. Why didn't that happen? And who made the call to go for the two towers instead of Baron? Mm, I don't think any of us. Uh, um, I think... Everyone was just scattered in the first game. We weren't in the um, same mindset, so everyone's like, "Oh, let's get this objected," and there's a lot of like disagreement and everyone doing their own thing. So the team wasn't really communicating, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And as for the early pressure, um, I blame myself for the first game for early pressure because I feel like I wasted so much time in the jungle, and I could have done so much better uh, if I would have just being able to roam and et cetera. But I don't know why I just couldn't, I just wasted so much time in the first game and that snowballed into them scaling into finishing the game. Yeah, I, I agree. And then for Gert, you had the, did you have like a sense of calmness knowing that you were a team that outscaled them, but then y'all were losing some really early, you know, mid game fights that probably should have gone y'all's favor what was what were the comms like right there especially with some interesting fights around the blue buff when both your oriana and your caitlin got picked off and then they aced you um i think the comms you know they they got caught um which was really unfortunate 
Um, we did try to do our best to peel, uh, just it's usually our the carries that got picked off, so we really didn't have the follow-up damage. But there was a sense of calm in that we did have a, a, a later scaling team um, with the beefy front line. Uh, they definitely went for, for picks, which is why I think, you know, I thought Tom Kench would be a really good um, pick into that. But it was mainly, you know, we have to make sure that our carries can, can scale a lot later. And I, I think despite a couple of... Um, fumbles here and there, especially with going for objectives. Um, I, I think that we, we definitely managed to pull it off in the long run. But the, the mainly the comms were we, we tried to peel. We got caught with our pants down, and that's usually what happens. So, well, If I could ask one more question about for each person on game two. Hanzu, what made you decide to do the Elise, and did you choose that champion because it's more of a comfort, and you wanted to kind of like make up for what you were talking about in your early game that you didn't do in the previous game? And then uh, I'll start with Gert while Hanzu thinks about that one. The team comp from y'all was fairly similar with a control mage mid, and then the Amumu. Uh, you had the pressure bot lane. But the Scion top is my big question. Why Scion top after, or I don't know where it was picked in the draft phase, but why Scion top? Um, well, Scion top was, uh, first of all, it's it's a flex pick between me and Garfield Juice. Okay. Um, Garfield Juice, he, believe it or not, like his, his Scion um, is actually normally pretty strong. Uh, I think I, I want to probably pay tribute to Hansu and uh, to Eric, for the uh, the roams that got uh, a lot of this behind, because uh, I mean they went for mainly a snowbally team, so that's that's why I don't think that it formed all that well. Um, but it was mainly because it was a flex pick. That's why we did it. Because um, I do play Scion support, uh, so just kind of going for that. Yeah, I guess y'all felt like the Braum would be a, definitely a better pickup though, especially against the MF, which was which was smart. Yeah, it uh, definitely was. I mean, they we could tell that they definitely did have a huge uh, team fight potential. Um, I mean, they they were in, they went very snowbally champs, and I think that we didn't we didn't really have too much pressure. I think Hans made very good work of this, and same thing with Eric. Uh, that the pressure from both the mid and jungler were just on point, and ours weren't able to react well enough, unfortunately. Yeah, and then for for you, Hansu, uh, do you want to give any credit to Eric? Was it his calls, or was it just all you, and you wanted to BM them by not going Moby Boots at least and just doing a lot of damage? I just don't see the point. I mean, I guess I might be discrediting a lot of at least players, but I don't really see the benefit for me at least. I don't really use Moby at all. It's my personal thing. Anyone else can use it if they want to roam more, but I just think having that extra pen, extra damage will help secure the kill instead of just roaming faster. Because, you know, even if you roam faster, if you don't have certain damage to secure the kill, what's the point of ganking, you know? And I felt like penet boost of penetration will do better trick than that, especially when you're, um, when you're ahead. Having that penetration really, really um, destroys champion without any MR. Yeah, I, I will agree with that, too, just for looking at your team comp, not a lot of damage in either solo lane for you to follow up on. Galio and Jarvan, they have like good CC to follow up to where you can land the cocoon, mm -hmm. or try to predict the flash cocoon mid lane, which was pretty cheeky. Uh, but you still got the kill, so I, I understand your point for uh, the sort shoes. But great, great game by you and Eric in the second game. Playing the comp the way I feel like I should have played the first game's comp, but you mm -hmm. gotta give credit to the draft that... Um, Seven Shades of Greg. Yeah, yeah, the first game was um they picked a really good comp against us and I, <laughs> Tom Kent, you know, just having the desire every time they need to um they for uh, we force and engage in just being able to carry the carry the um eat the carry out. Oh wow, phrasing. Um carry the carry, carry, carry the carry the safety. Oh you should have you should have heard uh Rich on the cast, he's like, oh, and he's just swallowing Caitlyn again. Oh, God. <laughs> Harry Cop, it's the mouth. Copper, 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 copper. Not like this, dude. No, but yeah, the, the first game we got 
destroyed towards the late game. And everyone in the other team just did an excellent job protecting Caitlyn. So. Yeah, all right, that's all I had. Since y'all were complaining about questions, I just gave you the whole rundown. Uh, oh, yeah. Take note, boys and non binary. This is how you do it. That's pretty good. <laughs> My questions Quiet. were great. Okay. Did you, you have questions? questions? I don't know. All right, is a hot dog a <laughs> no, sandwich? No. Or not? Oh, no, uh, it's a sandwich, but no to that question. No, no it's not. Uh, so, not Rich, it's not a sandwich. Rich, you have, Rich, well, actually, Rich and John, you both have been unbelievably quiet during this interview. I've been so doing Do you have questions for the player of the games that, you know, you, you cut off voting for Eric way too early? I think you at least owe us. I think we should get Eric in here. Yeah, I think we should definitely get <laughs> Eric in here. Totally. Eric, get here. in here. Let's do a little switcheroo so I can run away. So yeah, so Hansu can run away. Just bring Eric. There he is. Hey, there's the hey, undead king of the mid lane. The party. I wouldn't say undead, but that's well, we jumped. You had the right skin and you didn't die. So <laughs> I almost died a couple times too. I was like, I'm pretty low. Oh, it's okay. I died by the tower. Yeah. When Hansu like executes the tower and he like walks out and then he walks back to the tower, but he hadn't walked out of the tower. Oh right? my god, I was like, <laughs> just stay there tanking tower. Dude, I'm a tank, you know, doing my job as the uh, full AP at least tank. I, I was watching, I was watching the replay back, like right as it was ending, where like we just kind of man moded through their team through their Nexus towers, and I'm like underneath their towers, and I haven't taken any damage yet. I'm like, this yeah. is good. You were at the you were at the point of the game where um that walrus was at the previous game where it was just like ungodly amounts yeah. of just tankiness. Yeah. Uh my my only real question uh for you was after game one, what was y'all's focus going in? And then two, what made you decide that righteous glory was gonna be the item for you? Well, our focus was on the draft because we kept getting out drafted. We, we never feel like we're mechanically or skill-wise out of a game, but we kept, like last week and the week before, and then game one this week, we kept feeling like we left the draft and we just didn't have the tools we needed to win the game. Um, and so we kind of shifted everything. You know, we, we banned out um, Shogath, Maokai, <laughs> and Sejuani. We banned out the tanks that we weren't planning on playing that are really Smart strong. strong. Um, and so we were able to get the first pick Galio, um, which then opened up a lot of flex because we could have sent that top, we could have sent that mid. Um, and, and so we really were able to play off of that and get ourselves a good draft <laughs> that gave us a good chance in team fights, gave us a good chance to set up ganks for the for Hansu. Um, and I think that was the biggest difference was just we had a comp that worked. Do you uh, want to rail into your jungler right now for not ganking early in the first game? You can do it right here, live dude, on stream. I mean, I mean, you can say <laughs> hey, that. Eric, like... Eric, remember, we got the we got the group chat. I can flame you there, too. So. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't rail into him. I just think, like, like I got Nothing so personal, early. kid. I got killed early. Like, there wasn't much he could have done because his lanes were losing too early. I mean, he did get eventually into mid lane with my ult on Lissandra, which is pretty nice gank assist, but, like, there wasn't much he could have done any earlier than he did with lanes just being behind. I mean, to yeah. be honest, I wanted to. Our team wanted to focus top lane. And so get the Lucian so, rolling. So, yeah, so get the Lucian rolling. But without reliable CC to stop the mm -hmm. enemy, it's really hard to gank. Yeah. And having the Sandra mid lane, you know, it's really easy to gank. Yeah. So, so we just got out. Like, we just got out drafted to game one. Like yeah. I, and and then we misplayed a little bit, but like. If you have a really strong draft and a really good comp, you can afford to misplay a couple times. But our draft had to play perfectly, yeah, mm -hmm. and it did. Um, what was the other question? I don't even remember what it was. Why did you ult so poorly in some team fights? Or why? Why? I, I, that, that's just me. That's BM. Why are but, you bad at this game? <laughs> that's just BM. Oh, no, right, right. My, my real question is. You prioritized yourself in some spots where I felt like you could have prioritized them. Oh, and then the there was two, there right. were, no, 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 on the Lissandra. Oh. Well, that, that was the second question, but I want to change it now because it's it's okay. Uh, <laughs> it's not as important. 
And then there was two team fights in particular. One where the cleanse was down the Oriana and you decided to ult yourself around the dragon. Uh, that's when you went into the back line coming from the banana bush on blue buff. Yeah. And then the last one was during okay. the inhibitor fight and you ulted yourself, but I don't think you pressed uh, okay. your E already. Okay. I, I, have, I know exactly what happened in both of the situations. So Good. The one that's by Trinity. Uh, I I believe I had just finished Leandries by that point, and I was trying to go for it. Let's shred some HP off of these tanks, and that's kind of what I was going for. Trying to deal as much damage AOE to as many people as I could in that mm -hmm. one. Um, the second one was I thought I had flash up, and I didn't, and I was going for a flash ult, and then I like hit flash and ult, and I didn't move. I'm like, oh, my flash is on cooldown. Fuck me. So, <laughs> so question mark ping. He's yes. trolling. Got it. All right. Pretty cool. much. We can take the MVP away from him, though. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I do remember the Rachel's glory, though. And, and Kick him out. The, I remember you asking me, like, why I went with that. Uh, yeah. Well, I think Rachel's glory is really strong right now as an item. Um, and I don't necessarily think it's really that... Like, I still think it's really greedy. Like, because you get a DC chunk of health when you get the... And it, it, it allows you to be greedy towards your tank stats while still enabling your team because then I can get in a little quicker uh, give me the move speed to just maybe land at that taunt I used I, there was one time where I used it pretty much exactly how I wanted to right before we took our second Baron I really just glory up through the river threw my taunt on and just walked rid it broad and was able to get my taunt on fairly easily I didn't even have to use my E because then I could be like you know, E out of the illusion like it was it was very much it's very much because it's strong. It's kind of the same reason why you see everybody building stealth play, because that item's strong. So. Alright. Well, I'm done. I'm done flaming, too, for now. <laughs> and, um, and I did see Garbage uh, that I was, I was wrong. They banned the show. We were actually going to first pick that show gap and send it mid, actually. Um, uh, and then one. they banned it. Game two. Uh, but then they banned it with their last ban, so I was like, well, let's just take the Galio, and it worked out fine, but... Yeah, that, I think that I think the Cho'Gath would have probably been a misstep because for you, um, dude, have you getting, seen me play Cho'Gath? Yeah, exactly. No, bruh. I'm kidding. Bruh. Bruh. My point when saying that is that <laughs> you you wouldn't have been able to do those three four man dive bots and keeping people alive if you had Cho'Gath, the instant no, yeah, type yeah. of. You're absolutely right. It, it was it was great the way it worked out, uh, mm -hmm. but it wasn't originally our plan. The Galio was a pivot because the Cho'Gath was banned. So what you're saying is that your first plan was worse than the actual execution. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but Dude, we wouldn't have known great. that until I'm saying. No, I, our team was great because I slept through half of the chancel leg and we didn't know what we were picking. Maybe that's this why is, you didn't is... know we were going with Lucian because we, we talk about it all the time and we talked about it. And then, like, after game one, he's like, where do we get the idea for the Lucian top? I'm like, Hansu, we talked about it oh, nonstop for the last all week. All right, this is stuff for the in-game chat. Y'all are just... <laughs> Talking about strats that suck right now, so you know that. Well, maybe we're selling false information for the. Game. It's all it's all a ploy. It's all a right. it's well, a strategy. Apparently, no one is in chat anymore because they want to go watch Game of Thrones. So. Dude, who uh, oh, yeah. 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 Well, actually, I don't watch Game of Thrones. Feels bad. See, now. that's why you get HBO now, and you can watch whatever you want. Or you, you can just have money for that. Not do it illegally and find it on these sites that are totally illegal. <laughs> So, uh, if no one has anything else, I think we should yeah. wrap this I got up. The, I got nothing else. So, oh, yeah. wait, shout out to our sub. Hey. Oh, hell yeah. Subs. Yes, shout Multiple. out to Garfield Juice. Yeah, too. always, always shout out to our sub. Yo, uh, major shout out I, because Funky yeah. Sal paid 10 bucks to change his name to definitely not Sal. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, because, and I don't know why, but it was awesome. I do want to give a shout out real quick to. Uh, Mr. Uh, Nolan, who uh, oh yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Mr. Oh, John yeah. Nolan McCoy, Mr. Daddy, yeah. oh yes, daddy. he's hopefully gonna be a daddy by the end of the day. Hell yeah, That's big awesome. daddy Juice. Nolan. <laughs> so we got Garfield Juice instead, but yeah, shout out to to Daddy Nolan. Wait, can me can everyone call Nolan Daddy from now on? I, yes. I would not yes. oppose that. Yes. <laughs> Let's everyone here call I, him. Da call him. Daddy. I nominate that we change uh, our address to Nolan or uh, our <laughs> uh, into Daddy. I'm just just <laughs> All right. Good, so good meme. I, <laughs> fresh meme. So I.
guess, yeah, that's going to do it. So we are going to be back at 10 p.m. EST tomorrow for Three Pump Chumps versus Team Foreskin. I'm casting that with OP. So yeah, I've, I'm Rich Rachi Maddies, and oh god, the quad cast technically. John Skjernsen, Skjernsen, <laughs> Caleb Blackie Chan Extra, and, and Sean Menbung Shannon. Good night, y'all. Man bun! Man bun.